Bernie Sanders just won fucking Nevada, you guys. He did it. That's three early states. He said uh, 47% is uh, is what he got. He got 47%. Um, like, no one even came close. I think Biden was like at 19% or something. And now, and then Pete Buttigieg was like at 10 or something like that. Or 12. Uh, something along those lines. And now, I think Buttigieg is like, no, but we got to second place. Because second place is um now what we're saying is that if you get second place then um then that's who becomes the president not the first place person who gets all the votes we we're kind of changing what democracy means because second place um is is uh is presidential we don't we don't want we don't want first place because first place is too arrogant and second place means that you're more low key and uh, more connected to uh, the people as you take money from 40 billionaires. Like, fuck off, Pete. But Bernie uh, has taken all three early states, all three of them, uh, and. From what I'm hearing, that's kind of unheard of. I don't think uh, there has ever been a uh, presidential candidate in any race, Democratic or Republican, that has won um, all three early states. That's like huge. That's that's monumental. That's that's very historic. I think that's really fucking awesome. And this is a, a self-proclaimed democratic socialist, registered independent, running within the Democratic Party, that is winning the will of the people. That is due, like that. This is what people want. Nine, and it's like it's like he has the most diverse amount of people that voted for him, including a bunch of old people, which is what they say Bernie doesn't do well with. They're like, oh well, Bernie doesn't do well with old people, you know. I mean, he's very old, but he doesn't do well with old people. He's he's, he's a self-hating old person, you know. Like that's a you know the weird thing uh, that they say like the older you get, the more you'll end up realizing uh, you know being more realistic and centrist or whatever the fuck it is. But like the older I get, the more radical I'm becoming. I think the more I'm realizing like yeah, the fucking system that's been that's been quote unquote working for. 30 years isn't really working like this is not how systems are supposed to fucking work this is a system of inequality uh and bullshit is mostly what it is uh, so i think it's really fucking cool that we're, this is the point we are in history and of course after nevada uh, corporate media or members of the corporate media fucking started losing their mind, particularly Chris Matthews. Um, Chris Matthews, I think, has been slowly losing his shit and throughout the entirety of Iowa was drunk as fuck. Uh, like, I, and I don't think he's sobered up since. Like, he, he's been making some pretty wild and outrageous claims um, that, you know, like, if if, Demo- if if it wins, then it, I'll be hung in Central Park. They'll kill me. They'll kill me. That's actually one of the things that he said. Uh, and we'll get to the second outrageous thing that he said about Bernie Sanders in just a second here. But one of the things that he said was um, Bernie's election would kill him. They would... Um, that 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 the, uh, the the socialist reign would mean that that they would kill him. That's literally what he said. And here's the thing, right? Uh, Bernie's election would mean that that is the will of the people. Uh, that that the will of the people has won. This is what we want. This is what we wanted in 2016. Uh, and you know, like we we wanted left wing populism to go against right wing populism and see what comes out on top. See, really measure. Uh, the weight of the country, of where it is, uh, because there were so many things, uh, so many variables that created Trump. But if we, if we got Bernie in the Demo- as as the Democratic nominee, 
that would mean that the will of the people was listened to. That means that we voted for it, which means that if Matthews, Chris Matthews, was to be killed, uh, that would mean that we democratically elected to kill you. I mean, that's just democracy at work right there. We voted for it. We voted that you should uh, be executed. And who knows, maybe maybe Chris Matthews is going to try to prove a point by uh, killing himself in Central Square. Maybe he'll hang himself in Central Square and uh, try to prove a point about socialism that nobody uh, will understand because no one fucking knows what you're talking about right now. Uh, and then he goes on to basically say that uh, <laughs> Sanders winning the early states is... <clears throat> is like the Nazis invading France. Uh, once again, I would like to point out that Bernie Sanders uh, is Jewish. And uh, if you are a fan of MSNBC because you're a good liberal, quote unquote, good liberal, uh, I think this is your cue to stop watching MSNBC. He just, he just compared a Jewish senator that believes in democratic socialism that wants the middle class America to thrive and to do well and for all of us to like be able to live our lives comfortably without, without being stuck in, uh, in debt peonage and, uh, or, and be caught in this strange version of slavery where you can't leave your work because that's how health insurance is given to you. He's like, hey, maybe that's not right. And, uh, and Chris Matthews, who is part of the liberal media, just equated that Jewish senator that believes in, uh, in, in, the, in improving the lives of, uh, of, of the American middle class, uh, of immigrants, of everybody in this country, to Nazis. A Jewish democratic socialist is the equivalent of the party that killed Jews. That's what Chris Matthews believes in. And if you're a quote-unquote good liberal, I think it's about damn time that you fucking turned off MSNBC and started paying attention to people that are actually delivering the truth. Real fucking journalists. That you start supporting people like Julian Assange. You start supporting people like Max Blumenthal at the Gray Zone, Ben Norton, Anya Parmpil, Aaron Maté, fucking Caitlin Johnstone, <clears throat> all these independent news organizations, Glenn Greenwald, that do objective reporting without saying bullshit like this. I think it's about damn time. <laughs> You know, I really wonder what Chris Matthews thinks about Jesus, considering that Jesus is basically a democratic socialist Jew. Does he think that Jesus was the first coming of Nazism? <laughs> what the fuck? On national television, he did this. I mean, now people are calling uh, for Chris Matthews to be removed off the air. Um... Uh, and, uh, and I think we should take this one step further. How about we get rid of all the fucking rich people on television telling all the middle class what to think? Because they're out of touch. They don't get it. Like, what's happening right now is the next step of the movement that was started in 2016. We had a movement that believed in what Bernie Sanders was saying. We don't have AOC or Rashida Tlaib or Ilhan Omar or a bunch of the people that got into Congress in 2018 uh, without, the, without the inspiration of the movement that Bernie Sanders ignited. You know, that's what not me, us really means. And now you're seeing that there's a, a lot of people, especially young people, uh, especially not just young people, but people that, you know, kind of gave up on the electoral process are coming back to it and participating in it. Bernie Sanders is exciting 
the base and that's that's uh, I think that's a very positive and wonderful thing and the media is looking at it going the, I mean the people are the, what the, the people are just letting you know what 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 they think is right and and and, and they and the people are saying that what's right is 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 Medicare for all and a, a, a free public college and decreasing the military budget and not having wars uh, in, in parts of the world that we don't need to see wars and invading countries and I mean they're talking about taking care of each other and running a, a compassionate economy I mean this is ridiculous how dare that's what Chris Matthews is doing he's freaking out because there is there is a fund this is the beginning of a fundamental shift in the paradigm of the way we live our lives. That's what this is showing you. And they're completely out of touch to it. Because they have been telling you what to think. And now we're going, yeah, I think you're fucking wrong. Chris Matthews, I think you're fucking wrong. And I think you're kind of losing your fucking gourd, bro. This is astounding. So, Anand Giridharadaras. Anand Giridharadas who is a, uh, an economist and um, I think he's, a, he's just sort of a commentator on MSNBC. I could be wrong about that. If you know, leave a comment. Um, but he kind of came out and made uh, some statements against Chris Matthews, one of them primarily being that uh, th th these are people stuck in a very old way of thinking and they're not evolving their thoughts. They're not seeing that the world around them is shifting and instead of instead of being like, okay, this might be a positive thing, they just kind of flip flip their fucking wad and start screaming and freaking out and making these like outrageous extreme statements. And I mean, this is not this is not the first line. Like comparing Bernie Sanders to Nazis is like one of the largest proofs that they're running out of lies they're running out of lies how else can they smear him how else can they twist what he's saying they're running out of lies they're going to these in incredible extremes to try to prove that this guy is bad news bears when he's not it's the same thing, like, Harry Reid was talking to Chris Matthews, just watching uh, the other day, and, you know, he was like, well, I think Medicare for All is unreasonable. You know, what do I say to my uh, 70 million constituents that uh, would lose their private insurance? You tell them that they get back on insurance because it's Medicare for All, you dumb idiot. It's literally the most illogical statement that you fucking made. But that's how they sell it. They're running out of lies. So they have to loop these, these, these logical fallacies and try to confuse people into it. But we're not falling for it anymore. 47% of people in Nevada fucking voted for Bernie Sanders to be president. That's who they want. That's who they want it to be the Democratic nominee. Anand Giritharadas goes on to say uh, that what's going on right now doesn't fit with the establishment's mental model, right? The, the way that the establishment has been running things is that, well, we have the money, we have the resources, and we have the power, so we control you. We tell you what to think. You don't, you don't push back against us. We have money. Henceforth, we have power. You don't get to push back against that. Well, guess what? We have been, and we are, and we're going to win. Three early states went to Bernie Sanders. And it doesn't fit because, because to them, they go, wait a minute, but that's not what we told you to do. We didn't tell people that they can vote for Bernie Sanders. We've been telling you not to do that. This is bullshit. So now they're freaking out. And they're and they're running out they're running out of excuses. They're running out of they're running out of lies. They are running out of lies. That's basically where it's at. The scary part to them is uh before I make this statement, I, I will say that it's kind of awesome that Anand Giridharadas went on MSNBC and pretty much called out the establishment elites for being fucking out of touch, scared little 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 children, 
uh, and you know like hey the model's changing and either you can change with it or uh, or or go away that's really the options that are being presented to you here um, so I find that really really entertaining I think that's really funny to me um, I don't uh, Crystal Ball pointed this out and it's uh, you know I, I like I like Crystal and Sager's show um, very interesting show uh, big, I, I like them a lot and they basically were like let's see if he gets invited back to MSNBC in the near future let's see if he be, if, if, if he's going to be a contributor to MSNBC anytime in the near future uh, my, my guess is that he won't that he won't be invited back um, because he, he did challenge uh, the, the status quo and he kind of called out the status quo uh, and, uh, and, and you don't get to fucking do that. Like Lee, Lee Camp called Fox News, uh, News uh, a, a, a parade of propaganda and guess what, has uh, never been invited back to Fox News. Like not even Tucker, like Tucker Carlson just had Jimmy Dore and he has Tulsi Gabbard and he has a bunch of people from the, like a lot of people from Bernie's camp is all, have also been um, on Tucker Carlson show, uh, but uh, you don't see Lee Camp. Not after he called Fox News a parade of propaganda, which is not a false statement. But here's what we're looking at. We're basically looking at the beginning of a movement. That's what this is. This is the beginning of a much larger movement. Okay? And the movement was was kicked off in 2016. We're just picking up a whole lot of steam now. Now we get to now we get to reap the rewards of, of fighting for the last four years, of, of pushing for what we believe in, for, for mm-hmm. having these conversations, for for getting people to, to realize that, you know, we do have a government system uh, that's put into place, that is in a position of power. Uh, that has not really cared about us very much. And, and we finally are, are, are you know, putting our vote where, where our, it matters and, uh, and, and pushing for a candidate that, um, that stands with us. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys for checking out that video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up uh, and uh, hit that share button. Share it out to uh, a friend. Share it out to an enemy. Share it out to anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, Content like this doesn't get uh, often get shown to a lot of people because it's controversial material. Uh, So, uh, you know, I really depend on, on people liking and sharing it, uh, it with friends, with groups, with people that are going to appreciate something like this or get something new out of this. And, and please make sure that you are uh, liked and subscribed to my page, to my channel, um, because sometimes they, uh, uh, they, they remove people uh, or, they, or they just don't show it to people that are even subscribed. So just double check to make sure that you are. Uh, and uh, uh, I have live stand-up comedy dates uh, if you like the content that I put out, the videos that I'm putting out, uh, I talk a lot about the sub- similar subject matters in my live stand-up comedy show. A lot about organized religion, uh, historical anecdotes, competition, late-stage capitalism, stuff like that. So, uh, worker rights, uh, you know, d- taking Jeff Bezos down a couple pegs. Uh, and uh, if you want to come see me perform live stand-up comedy, uh, I am going to be in uh, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. We just added Des Moines, Iowa to this tour. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, and much, much more. Uh, I'm going to be touring uh, all over the country, including uh, doing dates with my good friend Lee Camp, who has released his brand new book and is doing a book release and stand-up comedy tour that I have uh, the honor and privilege of opening uh, up for. Uh, so go, uh, go, go, go! Check out Lee Lee's tour schedule as well, because I'll be on tour with him. Uh, we're coming to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta. We're going all over the place. Uh, Dates are available on my website, 
ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to these events, come hang out with us. Uh, and uh, you can also become a patron uh, over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. That helps the quality and quantity of these videos and helps me put out more content more regularly, helps me uh, be on tour uh, more concisely, uh, more uh, uh, more smartly. Smartly, is that a word? I don't know if that is, but it, it, it helps me get out uh, on the road a lot more and hit different parts of the, the, the country that I don't uh, regularly get to hit so uh, I can build I can build tours uh, smarter and, and uh, better than I am now and, and I and, and, and I, I appreciate all the people that have already become uh, patrons um, and uh, another way you can become a sustaining member is via Bandcamp by becoming a, uh, a subscriber and a follower on Bandcamp which gets you uh, collections of stand-up unreleased to the public which includes storytelling shows, which includes shows where I, you know, riffed a bunch of material, uh, with uh, uh, you know, collections with material that never made it on an album, early versions of uh, my, my shows, fringe festival versions of my shows uh, that can be slightly different than the final cut uh, of uh, all the material that I put out. And you can also contribute directly on my website. So if you follow this video on my website, if that's where you watch this video you can you'll probably see a little orange button uh, and if you click that you can become a sustaining member directly on my website once again that's ramen noodles comedy.com that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com thank you guys so much for tuning in i really really appreciate you guys watching i really really appreciate everybody that subscribed i really appreciate all the people that are sharing these videos um, get getting the word out about them, coming to the live stand-up comedy shows, uh, and hanging out and getting weird and esoteric after the shows. I really appreciate you guys a whole lot. It means a whole bunch is to me uh, that you guys are, are, are supportive of what I'm doing. Uh, but till the next video, uh, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.